All right, verse Kings 18, <laughs> verse 44, and we're going to look at verse 44. It says, uh, And it came to pass at the seventh time, now this would be the seventh time that Elijah prayed for rain, the seventh time he sent his servant out on the seventh time. Sometimes when it comes to God and the things of God, you just simply have to persevere. You just got to keep going, uh, especially if you've been given a promise of God. If you've looked into the Word of God and you found a promise there, you, and you're standing upon that promise, and you're praying that promise, and you're believing God for that promise, uh, and you go out and you look and you don't see any evidence of the promise, then you go back to the place of prayer and you just continue to persevere. You thank God because he hears you. You thank God because his word has promised you certain things. And then you just simply persevere in prayer and you ask God to do it. Uh, and God always comes through. Now, sometimes when God comes through, it may not look exactly like what we prayed for. It may not look exactly like what we wanted. Uh, but we do know this. God comes through one way or the other, doesn't he? He, he either sends rain just like we asked or, he, or the rain doesn't come. And then he just provides grace to, to endure the battle. That rain doesn't come, but one thing's for sure. God has a plan. God sees everything. God is sovereign. God has a will. God's will is being accomplished, and we rest in his will. And we stand upon his word. We pray his promises. We believe his promises, but we rest in his will no matter what. Everybody with me? Sure, All right. Verse 44 says, And it came to pass at the seventh time. So Elijah didn't give up. He didn't quit. He didn't stop. He just continued to pray. Uh, and that's what we must do as well. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there are Rises a, a rises a little cloud, a little cloud. So this is the servant actually talking, uh, and he said to his master Elijah, to uh, his, his leader Elijah, that there, he now sees a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. So now there's this little cloud that has formed out of the sea. Elijah's praying for rain in order for rain to come. I'm still praying for snow myself. <laughs> Amen. I just want everybody to know that I'm still praying for more snow. Amen. We didn't get hardly any snow in December, January. It seemed like no, hardly any snow in November. I mean, they might as well just pour on us until at least, you know, June or something. What? Right? Right? No? Okay. Anyway, all right. I think everybody's not with me on that one. Uh, but, you know, it would be kind of interesting to have, to have winter in June one day. I mean, it'd be kind of no. I could play with my plow all... Oh, oh, no? Okay. All right. And it came to pass at the seventh time uh, that he said, Behold, there arises a little... So he's praying for rain. And in order for rain to come, you're, you're going to need to see a cloud. And so finally the servant sees a cloud. Uh, he gets excited over the fact that there's a cloud. He goes back to Elijah. He says, There's a little cloud out there. It looks like a man's hand. Uh, now, I've heard a lot of people make a big deal over the fact that that cloud was in the shape of a hand, and they've talked about it being a representation of the New Testament fivefold ministry because there's five fingers on the hand. Uh, I don't know about all that. In fact, I wouldn't go that far with it, but I would just say this. Uh, Gordon, you ever looked up into the clouds and, and saw things that were up there, right? And sometimes you may be uh, going down the road, and you may have a long trip ahead of you, and the people in the car are getting bored, so what do they do? They stare up in the clouds, and they try to find shapes and letters and giraffes and zebras, and then somebody finds something and points to it. Well, this servant saw what he looked, what he believed to look like a hand in the sky. He was even in the, in the shape of a cloud. And if you haven't had rain for three and a half years, I'll tell you what, any kind of cloud would look good, wouldn't it? I mean, it would, even if it, yeah, it would look good. I was going to make a political joke, but I decided to let it go. Amen. And, and so it would look good. So he sees the, a little cloud up there and a the little cloud's probably not going to produce much rain, but where there's one cloud, hopefully another one comes. And when there's a little cloud, God, hopefully it continues to grow and, uh, and and that's kind of the stance of Elijah it's kind of the stance of the servant as we're going to see all they needed to see was a little cloud in the shape of a man's hand and they began to believe God and trust that rain was coming and of course they believed God even before they saw the cloud but anyway in verse 24 at the end of the, at the middle of the verse and the Bible reads and he said go up so now this is Elijah speaking go up and say to Ahab prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop Stop thee not. And that's quite an interesting proclamation, I think, because they see, all he sees is a little cloud in the form of a hand, uh, and, and his response to a little cloud in the form of a hand is go tell Ahab to get down the mountain, because if not, there's going to be so much rain coming from a little cloud, because little clouds don't stay small forever. 
Right? If you saw, he was believing God to send a massive rain, to send rain upon Israel, to give water to drink, to give vegetation, to revive the situation. Uh, probably it's going to look a lot like 2024 and out of the Biden years. We're going to be praying for some little clouds. We just pray the gas prices go down and we pray, come on. Yeah. You all see the rising, right? Well, I told somebody today, elections have consequences. So thank a Democrat. Amen. When you go, that's right. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So anyway, elections have consequences. Who we vote for matters. And uh, when you vote for extreme environmentalist crazy policies where they shut down pipelines, but they'll take a, a, a oil across the ocean, no problem. But they got to shut down a pipeline right Right? And, you know, when they come up with all these crazy environmentalist weirdo uh, policies, it has consequences. Is, and you can see those consequences hitting at the gas pump about right now. In fact, yeah, yeah. In fact that, that gas prices went up today about two yeah. about to two sixty four here in town. Yeah. Uh, that was a quite a quite a jump. That's been a while since I've seen it that high. And at the end of four years, we're going to be praying for some rain. I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, All right. So uh, he, he sees this little hand, uh, and, and uh, based on this little cloud, he says that he anticipates that there's going to be so much rain that it could possibly stop Elijah from getting down the mountain and going to Jezreel, excuse me, Ahab, from getting down the mountain and going to Jezreel, which is where Ahab was headed. And so, uh, and so Elijah sends a warning to Ahab. He says, prepare thy chariot. In other words, get your chariot ready and get out of Dallas. Do you ever been in a situation where you had to leave in the middle of the night really, really quickly? And maybe you had to leave really, really quickly, and as soon as you got in there, you needed to go uh, to a place and get there really, really quickly. And as soon as you got in the car and started it, you realized you didn't have much gas. Anybody ever anybody ever been there? I've been there a time or two. Like, man, I should have filled up on my way home. I didn't know that phone call was coming. I didn't know I had to go there or get over there. Uh, and so it, it's just like that situation. Elijah says, prepare your chariot. Whatever you had to do to prepare, to prepare a chariot, get your horse ready or whatever. Give him some water. Get him saddled up to the chariot and uh, however all that works. And get down the mountain because rain's coming. And when rain's coming, you might have trouble. There's going to be so much of it, you might have trouble getting down the mountain. And so he says, go up, say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and give thee down, that the rain stop thee not. In other words, he looked at a little cloud, and from a little cloud he anticipated an abundance of rain that would actually be so much rain that it could stop Ahab the king from getting down the mountain. Now, I would just simply say this, Ahab the king is the reason why there's so much trouble in Israel. Right. And it seems like the reason why, even though it seems just, it just seems like the politicians always have a way of getting away with everything, don't they? Amen. Come on, right? I mean, like out of all the people that needed a warning, you know, to me it wasn't a way of Let him struggle to get down the mountain. He's the reason why we're here anyway. Right? Uh, but that's not what Elijah did. Elijah respected the political office, which perhaps may be a wise thing for us all to do. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's hard to respect the moral people. But nevertheless, uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, he, he, he sends warning to Ahab. So I would say all that to say this. We need to be careful and we need to pay attention uh, concerning the warnings that we are given. What do you think? Amen. You have something? No? All right, so there's going to be certain warnings that come into our lives. There's going to be certain warnings that come into the church of God. There's certain warnings that are filled in the pages of Scripture. And a lot of times as Christians, we may read them and we may think, well, that warning's for sister so-and-so, or that warning's for brother so-and-so, or that'll never affect me, or I've been preaching for 15 years, or I'm never going to do that. They're going to do that because they're weak and they're liberal and they're self-centered and they're selfish. That's going to take them out, but it'll never take me out. We need to be careful about the warnings. Uh, just because they have king doesn't mean there can't be so much rain that comes down the mountain that washes his chariot off the side and he dies as king uh, because he did not take heed to the warning. You think Ahab's going to listen? No. I, I, well, one thing's for sure, uh, we ought to listen. Right. I mean, we should. When we hear warnings, you, have you ever noticed that a lot of times in church people just simply do not listen? Yeah. They'll believe a seance. They'll believe
believe a scary movie. Yeah. They'll hear a pot bang in the middle of the night and believe it was grandma from 12 years wow. ago who's been dead coming back to bang pots. But they will not believe the Bible no matter what you do. Yeah. I mean, you can tell it to them uh, intellectually. You can break it down to them spiritually. You can break it down to them emotionally. I mean, you can tell them stories. You can show them truth. You can show them facts. And they just will not believe it. But they'll believe just about any and everything else. Yeah. But I tell you what we do need to do. We need to believe the warnings of God. We need to take heed to his warnings. We need to know that his warnings are real. They are meant to teach us something. And if we're not careful... Rains are going to come and wash us off the side of the mountain. So we need to be careful. Amen. Amen. We need to be careful. So I'm going to look at a few warnings, if you will. Uh, turn with me over to 2 Timothy, chapter 3. And we'll begin, begin reading with verse number 1. Uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. <clears throat> now, this is a warning that's given to us. Uh, it's, a, it's a warning that is going to be a warning specific to the last days, specific to um, what's going to transpire in the last days. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 1, when you find this, I found it. found it. All right, verse number 1. Now, I want you to know, know this about the last days. In the last days, according to Scripture, we are not heading into good times. According to Scripture, we are heading into dangerous times. We are heading into perilous times. We are heading into uh, what, what, from the natural perspective, can be scary times. And we are not heading into times where God's rule takes over just yet, although it will happen someday when the, when the clouds roll back like a scroll and Christ comes back and sets up his kingdom and he will rule the earth with a rod of iron. But right now, the earth is under the control of wicked men. The earth is under the control of wicked women. The earth, come on, it's just true. The earth is under, and, and not just America, but all across the world, uh, from China uh, all the way, all the way over to America, the world is under the control of wicked rulers, and wicked rulers do not like God's people. Why? Because they like to lie to people. What do God's people do? We tell the truth because the truth is the only uh, is the only thing that, that pushes back the lie. It's the only thing that pushes back deception. It's the only thing that pushes back the tool that the enemy has, which is a lie. It's what he's always used. He came to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and he said, Yea, hath God said, and he began to lie to them. He began to deceive them. So what does the church do? We speak the truth. And what does the wicked system do? They don't want the truth, so they come against the church. What I'm trying to say is this. Uh, I think we believed, uh, perhaps, that we were headed into days where we're where, where certain political rulers were going to rule uh, and they were going to be in charge and they were going to protect the church and they were going to uh, watch out for the church and they were going to watch out for our liberties and they were going to watch out for our rights. But if you're paying attention, we aren't headed into those days at all. Right. We're headed into the days the Bible talks about in, in 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Yeah. Everybody with me? Yeah. So it says in verse number 1, This know also that the last time, last days... President Trump will be reelected. He will watch out for all of your rights. You will have representation in the in the land. The Supreme Court will be will be on your side. Abortion will be stopped. Church will be protected. Did it say any of that? No. It did not say any of that, did it? What is the warning that is given? This know also. Know it. And know it's a fact. Know it's of a surety. In the last days, if you can look around and you can see that you're in the last days, know that this passage is speaking as a warning to yes. us. Yes. Amen. I have they said there was more technology in this cell phone than there was on the on the ship that took us to the moon back in the back in what was it the 60s or something like that? Oh, what's that? 68 or 69. 68 or 69. Uh, so there's more technology in this phone than there was in the whole spaceship that went to the moon in 69. I'm telling you, knowledge is increased. Technology is on the rise. Yes. I mean, they, amen. I like technology. I use technology. I think it's a beautiful thing. But I'm saying it's all headed in uh, the, 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 the direction of control. The direction of control, uh, where they control what you think, they control what you say, they control what you buy, they control what ads come before you, they manipulate you through advertisements, and they control you with, with, with control of information. 
Amen. Amen. In fact, they, 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 if you just think about the political cycle, I didn't think I was going to get on politics tonight, but if you just think about the political cycle, what if CNN, MSNBC, and all of them, including Fox News, what if, much of the time, what did they do for the last four years? They controlled the information you received. They, they told you, especially CNN and the liberal networks, they, tro they told you that, that Trump was putting children in cages at the border. But they didn't say anything about the fact that Harris and Biden love to murder children in the womb. Which is worse, you tell me. Amen. Come on. <laughs> and they also didn't tell you that Obama built the cages and was using them before Trump ever got in. What did they do? They controlled information through technology. That's right. Amen. So, so technology is heading the wrong direction. Uh, I've got a scale at home that when I get on it, it reads my weight. It reads my water content in my body. It reads my bone density. It reads all that stuff. Uh, and, and it's only accurate within you know, plus or minus a point or something. But I mean, who would have guessed that you could step on a scale and it would tell you how much bone density is in your body? And then not only does it do that, it sends all that data immediately to my bone and plots it in a graph so I can watch what my bone density and my water weight and my fat content. I watch your fat content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that technology is crazy. Yeah. We, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's crazy. Yeah. I love it, but it, my, I know, my wife knows I love it, but it is crazy. Sister Annie, go ahead. Chip in my body, that's for sure. I don't mind one on my cell phone, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I just is. I don't want one on my cell phone either. My wife likes to tell, tell me all the time that, that, that how bad technology is, uh, and she's right, but it's, but it's also kind of cool. Yeah. Right? I mean, it is. Uh, I, I would never put a chip in my body, but I do like the fact that I step on my scale and it knows how much bone density is in my body. I just think that's cool. Anyway, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. But nevertheless, let's look at verse 2, 2 Timothy 3 and 1. It says, This know also that in the last time, by the way, you are sitting in a building tonight that has more technology than church has had for 1,900 years. When you go, when you when you enjoy the heat, guess what that is? That's a furnace. That is technology that hasn't been around for a very long, right? Uh, you enjoy electricity. That wasn't that had been around for 1,900 years prior to us, right? I mean, right? I mean, so well, technology is a big benefit to our home and to our lives. Uh, cars, you get in them, they drive 70 miles an hour, no problem. Uh, 100 years ago, they were taking maybe 150 years ago, they were taking horse and buggy everywhere they went. Right? So we do know that we do benefit from technology, even as we put the screen, as we shoot the Bible over to the screen on the wall. Right? This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. So what is the Bible's prediction for, for the last days? Is it, uh, you know, great politicians, great political rulers will be in charge and they'll just protect all of your rights? No, it's not that. That's not it at all. So if we are living in the last days, and I would say that we are, uh, then we know that the last days is predicted as perilous times. What does perilous times mean? It means dangerous times. Now, I mean, who would have guessed that we would be living at a time where everybody that you know wears a mask everywhere they go. That kind of sounds kind of dangerous to me, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, like if there is an airborne disease that is so potent and so uh, 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 contagious that you can get it by just breathing on somebody, that's what I would consider perilous times, dangerous times, dangerous days. Uh, uh, you know, they say now that if you wear three masks, you'll have three times. <laughs> These people are nuts. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
Amen. Amen. Nuts. <laughs> We're three masks now. Uh, verse number uh, two uh, says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You know what? If you go to somebody's phone, you can tell whether they are a lover of their own self or not. All you got to do is go to their photo section, and if you go to their photo section and you see more photos of other people, you can probably tell that they're a lover of other people. But if you go to their photo section and 90% of their photos are selfies, then you can kind of predict that they might be just a little bit a lover of their own self. And I would venture to say that a lot of this culture has gone selfie crazy. I mean, they, they, they got to post a selfie. And like, I don't even want to see you once a week, let alone every day. <laughs> I'm not talking about you folks. <laughs> I'm, talk, I'm talking about the people that post. <laughs> I'm talking about the people that post selfies to Instagram and Facebook and YouTube every day. And they're like, Who they? no, I don't want to see you that much. Stop it. But they'll post selfies all day, every day. What are they? They are a lover of their own. Self. Amen. They're a lover of themselves. Amen. Uh, so he says, a lover of themselves. What else will they be? They will be covetous. They will want what you have. Uh, in fact, Bill Gates now is the largest owner of uh, farmland in America. He owns more farmland than any. That is scary stuff right there. I want to make someone throw my Microsoft computers out the door. Uh, by the way, these people don't become these people uh, by themselves. They become these people because we buy all their stuff. Right? I mean, it's true, and then it's beneficial to us. But nevertheless, uh, he, now and then he came out this last week, and he said that now rich countries, which is what he defines America as, well, certainly rich for him, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but, but, but it may not be rich for the guy who's watching his gas prices go up because Biden's a crazy environmentalist. Yeah. Amen. Uh, so, uh, but he said rich countries like America uh, now should all eat or uh, synthetic beef, which I don't even know what synthetic beef is, but I know what sy uh, synthetic material is, and that is a man-made material. So if you go to the, if you go to get your oil changed, they put synthetic oil in your car. That is some sort of man-made conglomeration. A Teflon is a man-made material, and it's so deadly uh, that they actually the, the, the chemicals used to create Teflon are so deadly that they call them forever chemicals because in a lab somewhere, synthetically, man built these chemicals, and now the body cannot break them down. If it does, it breaks them down uh, through years. But by the time years runs around, you have birth defects and cancer and, uh, and just look some of this stuff up man man is making all this synthetic material in fact most of your food contains GMOs or genetically modified uh, organisms or or, or, um, or food where they're not now they're not letting corn grow out in the field they're taking it into lab somewhere and figuring out a way to crossbreed it and hybrid it and make it stronger and bigger and better and so they can produce more and then what happens to the population we're putting all this stuff in our bodies that we don't have a clue what it is and then we get sicker and they get richer yes. and so now Mr. Gates has said that now all rich countries include which would be America uh, but by the way who gave Bill Gates the right to say anything shut up Amen. right I mean that's true like who are you sit down like who who Right? Come on, seriously. I mean, we went through a pandemic in this country, and out of all the people they could interview, they interviewed Bill Gates. What right does he to tell anybody what to do? Come right? But, amen. So now he is now the largest owner of farm. By the way, he's buying up that farmland for a reason. He's got plans for you, and he's got plans for me. He's got plans for us. And now he's saying, that some, I don't even know how you get genetic beef, but I'm guaranteeing you he's going to use all that farmland to produce man-made beef and give it to you, and you're going to get cancer, and you're going to, come on, it's just going to, it's what's going to, exactly what's going to happen. Uh, in Teflon, when they first came out with those, uh, with, with, the, with the strings of carbon that they used to create Teflon, uh, they, they, there was a particular community, I can't remember the name of the community, but it was in West Virginia, where the cattle just started dying, where these chemicals were leaked into the soil. Mr. It's just a true story. Look it up. What I'm saying is this. These are dangerous times. These are perilous times. These are dangerous days. And these people have a plan for us. 
Yes. Yes. Amen. I don't have a plan for, 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 for listening to them. I've got eating synthetic beef. Right. Amen. I just become a vegetarian before I put a man-made cow in my body. That's crazy talk. Amen. So these, they, they, I don't even know how I got here. Amen. But nevertheless, let's go. Let's continue to read against. Oh, covetous. Uh, they were, they're covetous. Why do these people have all these crazy plans? Because they're covetous. Uh, and then they want to take from you and give it to people who aren't even citizens of this country. Amen. It covetous boasters. They boast in how smart they are. They boast in how rich they are. They boast in how much they know. They're boasters. Have you ever met a boaster? Yes, I have. Amen. Uh, they also said that they are proud. They're proud. Uh, they're, they're full of pride. They're blasphemers. They blaspheme God. Uh, I, I have met people that say the word GD more than they, in, a, in the course of a day, more than I say the word and. I mean, they do every other word is a GD. Every other word is a bad word. They're blaspheming. They're blaspheming God. Watch out what else they are. They are disobedient to parents. They have no respect for parental authority. And in fact, they have no respect for authority at all. It starts in the home. If you don't have respect for your mom and dad, you're going to have respect for the police. If you don't have respect for the police and your mom and dad, you're not going to have respect for the judge. And actually, one of these communities, I can't remember which one it was, but one of these communities that over the summer rioted and said defund the police now that they've defunded part of the police department now they're complaining because of uh, police responses are too slow to their calls well what do you think was going to happen when you took when you cut the number of police officers in half come on right i mean uh, <laughs> what a weird world <laughs> disobedient uh, to parents. They have no respect for authority. They're unthankful. They don't, they're not thankful for anything they have. And watch what else they are. They are unholy. So instead of being holy, instead of being right, instead of being good, we have now a generation that's lovers of themselves. Well, when, what, when a person is a lover of themselves, guess what they'll do? They'll steal from you to give to them. When a person is a lover of themselves, they'll loot a store to get a free TV. Because after all, it ain't my, it ain't my money that's going out the door when we steal TVs. When a person is a lover of themselves, they will not love of that. To that degree, they will not love other people. So they don't love other people. They don't have any respect for authority. They want what you have. They're covetous. They're boasters. They're blasphemers. They're proud. And we are, And the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be a generation of people like this. Yeah, and then you and I are going to have to preach the gospel in the middle of this generation and guess what's going to happen to you and I perilous stuff dangerous stuff dangerous days I, I, I saw you thumbing through your bible did you have something you wanted to do yeah I'm just thinking about Daniel uh, chapter 12 verse 4 he said but unto you, unto you but unto you O Daniel shut up the words and seal up the book even to the end of the, uh, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased uh, certainly uh, uh, technology uh, knowledge yep, increased, increased. I was watching television today, and they were talking about something that has happened in years past, but it was still great. Uh, uh, a great uh, feed, I guess. They clone sheep, and uh, I don't know what man-made beef is. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's Could be it, beef, uh, uh, something along that line. Yeah. I'm not sure what it's what, what it's all going to uh, come down to, but I understand that they even are making body parts for humans. On the backs of rats and uh, and different types of animals, make make a, by doing whatever they do genetically. Somehow or another, they could make a rat grow an ear. Yeah. If you was to lose an ear in a fire and you needed an ear, they would make they would clone an ear and they'd be able to hook it to your body. And uh, and different things like that. So yeah, knowledge has increased. It really has. But uh, but the bad part about it is the heart is still deceitful and and they don't want to recognize God. And so they, uh, even though they have great knowledge, they also have this bad heart. Yeah. And, uh, and they can't get rid of that. Only way to get rid of that is through Jesus Christ. Yep. And uh, yep. what, a, what a sad day we're living in, but what Amen. a great day we're living in. Yep. We just know that uh, our hope is in the Lord. That's right. He's coming back again, and that's our hope. Amen. Preach it. Yes. Amen. <laughs> 
you, you, you didn't have to uh, stop at all. I, I was just trying to find an, an article t that I saw today. Um, and it says, if I can find it, it says, Breaking, this is a true story, uh, Pastor James Coates, if that's how you say his name, it's the best I can pronounce it, uh, of Grace Life Church in Edmonton, which is a, a province apparently in Canada, 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 uh, was just carried off to jail in handcuffs, uh, in hand and ankle cuffs. Now they'll put uh, they'll put the uh, uh, the bomber the Boston Massacre bomber in a jail and he can sue the he can sue the government because uh, he doesn't have conditions good enough in there and that's what is happening it's happened recently yeah. but they'll take a pastor in Canada put him in handcuffs but that ain't just good enough for him I gotta put him in uh, ankle cuffs as well make sure he's good at, like he's a, he's a detriment to society well there are some pastors that are detriments to society by the way. In fact, there's a there's a recent pastor. Now I'm, again, now I'm digressing yet again. Uh, there's a recent pastor uh, by the name of Robbie Zacharias who just died. You know, maybe uh, a year ago. Uh, and as far as I was concerned, up until uh, up until uh, the, the reports that came out this last week, I thought the man was a hero of the faith. I mean, the guy was so smart. The guy was so intelligent. He defended the Christian faith all over the world. But not only did he do that, he used his position of authority and influence and wealth uh, to manipulate young women all across the world and now that he has passed away uh, they did an investigation on him and they said this dude has been manipulating and taking advantage of women all across the world. Uh, they said they had recovered his last three cell phones and it was filled with filth. It was famous. And so this is reports of his own ministry has now released on him. Uh, and so I don't say that to to, to, to defame him uh, but I just say that because some, some pastors are, are a detriment to society. This guy I was not. What was this guy doing? This guy was trying to hold church services during COVID. And they went to his church and they arrested him, put him in handcuffs, put him in ankle cuffs. And by the way, I still call it the China virus. Amen. Uh, the, 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 it's right. It came from China. Uh, the condition uh, of his release is this. They said this is, this is what Canada is saying. And by the way, Canada is a little bit more communist than America is right at the moment. Yeah. Canada, Canada's been going that way a little bit before we ever got there. I mean, they've been they've been on the LGBTQ bandwagon way before we ever got there, and they've been heading this direction for a long time, uh, a lot longer than we have. Uh, they've been they, they're more advanced in this than we are. But if this is happening in Canada, this is going to come down to the United States. What do you think? Sure. It's going to happen over here too. So they said the the condition of his release, in order to be released from jail, is that he cannot preach. This is a true story. So they came to church, they arrested, put him in handcuffs, ankle cuffs, and said, the only way we're going to release you, according to what I'm seeing here, uh, is that you cannot preach. His wife and his kids are not allowed to see him. Now, I don't think that he's telling everybody we're headed into days where the rulers of government are going to are going to protect the church. I think his testimony would be we're heading into perilous times, man. Yeah. We're heading into dangerous days. The only way they're going to let me out is if I stop preaching and I can't even see my wife and my babies. Guess what happens when you get a man uh, that really loves his family uh, and, and he can't see him. He starts to miss him and he wants to see him and they're using all the things that he can that they can use against him to get him to stop preaching. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. The article said this uh, the first this is the first Canadian pastor to be jailed for holding a church service during it didn't say China virus, but I'm gonna say that because it's just true. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, we are heading to perilous days. Yeah, uh, and actually, around the world, and in China, it's even much worse than it is in Canada. But, but trust me, uh, the current administration wants to see that kind of stuff happen to you and me as well because they don't like truth. They don't like you. They don't like you talking about life starts in the womb. Uh, they don't like you talking about marriages between a man and a woman. They don't like any of that stuff because they want to propagate a lie. And that which is a defense uh, uh, to a lie is the truth. So they don't want truth speakers in the culture. Verse 3, without natural affection. Now that has to describe, as far as I'm concerned, modern day abortion. It has to. Do you know there was another true story that I saw in the, in the news recently uh, where a lady said that the Biden administration, uh, and as far as I could tell, she was being very serious, the Biden administration is now offering X amount of kid, X amount of dollars in the stimulus package for kids, and she made, <laughs> she made the joke, and it's no joke at all as far as I'm concerned, that she needs to go back to the abortion clinic and ask for her son back so that she could get more money from the stimulus. That is disgusting. 
That is sickening. That is, that is, that is reprobate, if there ever was reprobate. Uh, I mean, it's one thing to be, to, to, to be caught up uh, in a situation where uh, an abortion happens. And, 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 uh, and if anybody's ever been there, man, my heart goes out to them, and I'm not there to judge them. But it's another thing, although I am there to say that it is sin, it is wrong, we do need to repent and get right, and we do need to stop it as a country. Uh, but, but I'm not there to, to continually condemn them. But what I am saying is when we have so little conscience and so a little natural affection that we could say to about the babies that we aboard I should go ask for my son back that's crazy that's reprobate that's scary folks if they'll do that to their own children what do you think they'll do to you Amen. without natural affection they don't naturally they, 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 they're, they're void of that which comes natural I, I was at I was at Dollar General the other day, uh, and there was this lady that was in front of me, and she was an older lady, uh, and I, I would guess she was uh, up in years, and I could tell she was all by herself, and, and it was in the middle of the worst snowstorm that we had had so far, as far as I can remember, this winter, uh, and she walked out to her vehicle, and she was all by herself, and I thought I probably gonna, it, it was terrible out there. I mean, it felt like you were in a blizzard, and I thought to myself, I said, if I say something to her, I had a big old face mask on, you know, big old gloves. And if I say something, I might scare her. But I thought to myself, I don't think she should have to put her groceries alone uh, in her car. She had a whole cart full of them. So I walked over to her and I said, ma'am, would, you, would you like some help? Uh, and, and she said, well, I'm loading the last of my bags now, but if you'll take my cart and put it inside for me, that will be a big help. I won't have to walk back inside in the middle of this blizzard. So I walked up, got her cart, and took it back inside for her. Which, by the way, I still think you ought to take your cart back inside. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Put your card up. Quit being lazy. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Don't leave your car on the parking lot for wind to blow it around into somebody else's vehicle. Have a little bit. Come on now. Put your car back up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, are we having fun? Amen. Amen. I, I say some of the craziest stuff, I think, sometimes. <laughs> oh, but, but it's true. Uh, so, anyway, what I'm saying is this. Uh, those type of things where, where people's hearts go out to the elderly or people's hearts go out to people who are less fortunate, those kind of things have been dropping off in our society for a long time, hasn't it? I mean, yeah. just the idea of somebody smiling or holding the door open for somebody else and just chivalry and being nice yeah, to people sure. and just being kind yeah. and looking out for other people and shoveling somebody else's sidewalk or doing something. These things are just simply going out the window. I mean, I have, I have pushed the... Uh, no, no, never mind. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll just let that one go. Uh, so some things are better left unsaid. Uh, normally, I, I figure that out after I've said them. <laughs> but I'll let that one go. Praise the Lord. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, people have been for years becoming void of natural affection, void of that which comes naturally, Amen. <laughs> so let's see what else it says here. It says, verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers. In other words, they don't keep their word. They don't keep their word. The, the word is not their bond. Have you ever met somebody that you could tell their word is their bond? Not that everything they've ever told you is exactly how it happened, but if they had it under their control at all, they would make sure whatever they said was exactly what they did. Yeah, come on, yeah. Like if I tell you I'm going to be here at 7 o'clock to teach Bible study, I'm going to have to have like a blizzard and the house is going to be on fire or something. But otherwise, I'm going to be in church to teach Bible study because I'm, I said I was going to. I made up the commitment to do so. Uh, and, and, and if I walk into church on a Sunday morning uh, at 1030 and the CO2 detector's going off, that's about the only way I'm going to not do what I said I was going to do. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Other than that, if the, if the CO2 detector is going off uh, and the CO2 is actually leaking into the building, by the time service is over, everybody's going to be dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that ain't worth all that to me. On that, in that occasion, it's time to go back home. Sure. Amen. Until you figure things out. We just didn't have a whole lot of time to figure stuff out. But what I'm saying is, outside of a major issue, I'm going to do the best I can to do what I said I was going to do. Amen. 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 Right. Truth breakers. People just simply break their word. They, and watch what else this is. They were false accusers. They're false accusers. But notice this. They are accusers. Yeah. Amen. They're accusers. They always got somebody... To, to something to say to somebody, but they never have anything to say to themselves. Amen. Amen. I mean, they can look at you and they can tell you about everything you've ever done wrong, but they say, well, brother, what did you do wrong? Well, sister, what did you do now? Me? Mm -hmm. right? right? Me? Are you serious? Like, me? 
Yeah, you. What did you do? Hello? False accusers. I think that's the reason that some people, a majority, the majority of the people that does that doesn't know Christ, uh, they uh, don't want the truth because if they get the truth, then they have to realize that they are sinners yeah. by nature. Amen. And if, if they accept that, then they have to have a savior. Yeah. They don't want. They don't want the savior. They don't want to accept the fact that they have sinned. And, uh, and that all the Bible said all the sin come short of the glory of God. Amen. But yet they don't want the truth. They don't want the truth because they, because their deeds are evil. Yeah. And they love darkness rather than light. And they prove it in the way that they live their lives. And in the and, uh, they don't go the extra mile to help somebody uh, to, just because they want to be kind. Right. Uh, they like to say I'm kind, but uh, they'll they'll put you in a uh, you know. So it's a pretty bad situation yeah. um, because their their hearts not right. Yeah, and so I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of like this is the general state I think of humanity in the last days. Uh, we were you have some. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, we, we have, there was a time in the infancy of our country where it seemed like people were halfway moral and they had natural affections and they loved their kids and they loved their neighbors and stuff. But that day is long over. So let's continue on. It says in verse number uh, three that they were to be despisers of those that are good. So not only will they not do good, but they'll despise you for doing good. They'll despise the fact that you do good because when you do good, it, it convicts them of their lack of doing good. Uh, so they despise those that do good. I mean, what, what, what bad situation would you be in as a person uh, if not only you didn't do good, but you despise other people who did? Now, you don't keep your word, but you despise those that do. You, right? Uh, the, 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 that would be that would be a bad state of affairs for you as a person, as far as I'm concerned. But verse number four: they are traitors. They're heady. They're high-minded. They're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Man, if this does not describe the New Testament church in America, I don't know what does. I mean, if you think about it tonight, I mean, there's just a slew of people that are more of a lover of pleasure than they are of God. We say, Brother James, how do you know that? Well, I know that because they don't miss the movies for nothing, but they'll miss church for anything. Come on. I, I know that because they don't miss the movies for, for nothing. They don't miss the carnival for nothing. They, 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 they walk over fire to get to the carnival, but they'll, they'll like one, one, one uh, raindrop will fall down, uh, one family member will come over, and they'll skip church as sure as a word. Amen. 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 What is that? The lover of pleasure more than a lover of God. God. Uh, this, to me, this is, by the way, this is not just an indictment against them, whoever them are in our lives. Right. This is also an indictment against us. It really is. I mean, okay, you should be able to look into your life to some degree and see where you are sometimes a lover of pleasure more than a lover of God, we should yeah, be able to say, I can see that in me. I can see there are certain pleasures and certain things I like to do that I could just about do them all day, every day, uh, and for hours at a time. But sometimes the church service starts to feel like it goes a little bit too long. Right. One of my biggest pleasures in life <laughs> is eating. <laughs> I love to eat, man. I do. I love to eat. I love donuts and cookies and, 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 and good fried foods and uh, beef that actually comes out of the field and not yeah. synthetically made in the lab or something. I like good things, man. Uh, we had, uh, we had uh, what we have, a pulled pork sandwich with coleslaw on the night. I mean, oh, man, that was good stuff. I like food. Right, uh, and, and and the other night I stayed up baking these donuts that I was trying to recreate. I ended up baking these things until midnight. I started around like maybe seven ish to kind of get the ingredients together and stuff. Go to the store, and I ended up baking, not baking, but frying these things until midnight. These yeast donuts, uh, and it took us four or five hours. And I thought to myself, when it was all said and done, I sure did spend a whole lot of time chasing a pleasure. I mean, think about it. I maybe spent more time chasing a pleasure in one night than I spent chasing Jesus the entire week. That's a problem. Amen. That is a problem. So we should be able to look into our lives and see areas uh, where we, we all fit this bill to some degree or another. Uh, having a, and then it says having a form of godliness. Now, there is a good portion of the American church that just simply has a form of godliness. They play the part. They shake the hands. They smile. They say brother. They say sister. Uh, and if you, they, I'm praying for you. Uh, and they, they talk the talk. 
talk, but they do not walk the walk. I'm telling you, they, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. What power? The power of God to change your life. Don't tell me God's in you and you're in God if God has not changed your life. Right. Not that he has made you to this day as, as perfect as he is, but that he is actively in your life sanctifying you and changing you and shaping you to be like him. That's right. Some people claim the title Christianity, but they are far away from Christ. They had believed, in my opinion, a man-centered gospel where they believed that man is the center of everything and everything exists to please me. God exists to please me. The church exists to please me. Everybody should exist to please me. And the moment you don't please me, then I don't like you. Amen. And that's the same thing they do with church. The moment churches don't please them, they don't like the church anymore. Amen. You let, a, you let a, somebody come into church and, uh, and they're happy with, let's just say, a particular program in the church. And, and then all of a sudden that program changes a little bit and it ruffles their feathers and they get mad and they get upset. They're going to go find there's a church on every corner for right, right, yeah. right now. Uh, so they go find them another church that fits their fancy. But guess what I've discovered about people like that? It'd be just a matter of time until something that happens over. Come on. Right. Right. It's a true story. So I think we ought to just maybe be not true breakers. We ought to just be keepers of our word. And, and if I look into a church, by the way, if I ever stop pastoring uh, this church and I start going to a different church, I have made up my mind that I'm going to be the best church member there ever was. Hallelujah. Amen. And if I look into a church and I see something about a church that I, and I, and I, if I figure it's worthy enough for me to give my time and attention and money to, and I look into it and I see something that I think, well, that's missing, then I'm going to go ahead and be that which is missing. I'll go ahead and step in and fill that void. Come on! Somebody say amen. Instead of me expecting the pastor to do one more thing with his little amount of time, I'll say, hey, pastor, I'll do that for you. Yeah, right. I'll do that for you. Oh, 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 the, 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 the lights weren't on soon enough? Well, then let me get to church a little earlier and I'll turn them on. Hallelujah. Right. Come on! Right. Amen. Come, amen. Hallelujah. I just, I just vent maybe a little bit, but I'm telling the truth, too. That's right. That's truth will make you free. Amen. So we need to take heed to this warning. I think that we are not heading. Let's read verse 6. It's fun anyway. For of this sort they are which creep into houses. You know, sometimes we got to be careful while we allow to creep you know, into our houses. Amen. Amen. We're not careful. We start letting stuff creep into our houses. And today it's a little bit of creeping, but tomorrow it wants a little bit more. And the next day it wants a little bit more. And that which crept in slowly has now crept in so big that it has taken captive our soul. Yes, Amen. I, I'm guilty. You're, I'm guessing guilty at times. we got to be careful. You know what the news would like to do? The news would like to creep into your house. Now, I, 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 I can't take the news anymore. I'll have a nervous breakdown if I watch too much news, man, or, or, or a fit of rage, one of the two, if I watch some of the stuff that's happening to our country at the hands of politicians who will never be affected by these stupid decisions. Yeah. Yeah. These rich millionaire politicians, they'll never be affected by gas at four dollars a gallon, but you and I will. Yeah. Amen. Some of that stuff would make me so upset. I can't do it. But if you're okay, if you're not careful, the news will creep all up into your house and it yeah. entangle your soul. Amen. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, if you're not careful, technology will creep all up into your house and yeah. movies will creep up and music will creep up in the horoscopes. Will Come on. Creep, creep yeah, up in your sure. house. For of this sort there which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins. I read that verse just so I could say silly women. Amen. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, 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 well, I actually did, really. But, uh, it was, I just wanted to make you all laugh. And it, I think it worked for the most part. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I should quit now. All right. <laughs> That was fun for me. Praise the Lord. It's good to smile, isn't it? it is. You know what? Just like this silly women, I'll throw this out here and make everybody happy. There's a whole lot of silly men out there, too. Right? Sure. Amen. 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 Sometimes the silly women get with silly men and the whole family silly. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, we're trying to dismiss this in prayer before I keep talking. 